This is the Open University. When I first moved to Berlin in 2003, I was so poor that I had to uh, take on some journalistic assignments which I would come to regret. And one of those, the worst journalistic assignment I think I've ever done was for BBC Olive magazine, which is a kind of um, uh, food and lifestyle magazine published by the BBC in London. And they wanted me to be their Berlin correspondent and to pick out um, but not even to pick out, to actually cover a set of restaurants and cafes in Berlin that they chose. Uh, they didn't have the budget to send me to these restaurants and things, so all I could do really was Google and find out online what pe various people had said in reviews or what, what I could find from websites about these places, and then to compile it all into some kind of handy consumer guide to Berlin. And it was horrible, soulless work, you know, and um, I really resented that I couldn't even go to the restaurants. At least when I was a, a restaurant critic later for the Japan Times, I was going to the actual places I was writing about. Here I was just a kind of compiler, a kind of um, a little ant running around databases and pulling together information, which might, for all I know, have been wrong. I might have been endorsing um, restaurants and, and cafes which were rubbish. But um, the other thing I used to do to make money, I lived with a fashion student at the time on the Karl Marx LA, and we had the huge four-floor Humana just down the street from us. Humana is a big charity shop in Germany, and it, we, I, we used to buy soft toys, and then she would uh, knit momus in, in large woolen letters on the front of these teddies and rabbits and things, and then we'd mail them out to people all over the world for 25 bucks a piece. That was how I paid the rent. I had quite a high rent in those days. I had a big apartment, um, which was 650 euros a month. And each apartment I subsequently got in Berlin got cheaper and cheaper as I moved into um, funkier areas. But um, uh, I suppose Humana has been a kind of key feature of my life in Berlin. It's the first place I took my girlfriend to. So I wanted to, give, uh, uh, to talk about the, the week my girlfriend, Noemi, uh, has just spent in Berlin. It wasn't her first time to Berlin, but the last time she came in winter for just a couple of days. This time she's in, she was here in summer, and I suppose in a way the places I considered worth taking her to are also places that I would endorse for casual visitors to Berlin. So you could either use this as a guide to Berlin for when you come here, or as a kind of virtual travel experience. Uh, so we went to the Humana, first of all, in the Karl Marx Trasse, which is my favorite Humana. Um, and I, I was astounded to find that there's a new and enormous Humana almost uh, next door to the one that I usually go to on the Karl Marx Strasse. I think it's part of the town hall complex. Um, they've got this amazing lobby. You walk in and it's got these kind of rich mosaics and sort of frescoes and things in, in the lobby. And then inside it's the usual kind of Humana with not a very well-developed vintage section, actually. The, the one, the original one on that street is better. It's in the basement, so we went along to that one eventually and got some clothes. Um, this is also a part of a suit. This is also from Humana, but the Humana on Alexanderplatz. There are so many uh, spread all through Berlin, um, and I, I just love going to them. We also went to the one on Zonnenallee, which is not so great actually, but I've had some nice linen shirts and things from there. Um, so second-hand clothes shopping is kind of important because it's, um, in a way, it's you're recruited. I, I kind of feel that when I show someone around Berlin, I want to recruit them to the spirit of my Berlin, which is very much, let's dress up in funky, retro, second-hand clothes from Humana, and um, parade through the city in this kind of style, which is, it's almost like the uniform of Berlin is a kind of um, uh, outrageous, um, a foraging style, where you're foraging through all the styles of the past, so you're being playful and you're also being artistic, and you're finding a new self, really. As one does when one furnishes an empty apartment. Um, my Berlin apartments have tended to be big, empty, unfurnished spaces at the beginning, and then to fill up with clutter. Not, not, not much clutter, though. I'm really very uncluttered as a person. 
But the, the finds that I've, I've found in junk stores, second-hand stores, and so on. And um, there, are, some of those are very German things. It, it's things which have a kind of um, sentimental uh, appeal of some kind. Well, I'll show you the very latest thing I got here. It's this second-hand East German telephone, uh, which I got at the um, Ostbahnhof market, actually just after seeing Naomi off to her train at the Hauptbahnhof. This is a uh, very East German design, and it says on the rotary dial, Feuerwehr, the fire uh, department, Rotes Kreuz, the Red Cross, in other words, hospitals, and the Volkspolizei, the old East German police force. Um, there is actually a very interesting Stasi museum in Berlin, uh, which, is, which we didn't go to, but it's very close to the Tierpark, which we did go to. The, the Berlin has various zoos, but the, the central one, the zoo station, the famous zoo station, is not the one we went to. We went to the old East German zoo, because of course, having been a divided city, Berlin often has two of everything. Two airports, um, we used to have three, obviously, um, two zoos. So we went to the East German zoo, which is uh, more like a safari park. It's really spread out, and it's got a lot of forests around it. So we went rambling <coughs> in the forest. I won't, I won't go into more detail than say we just went rambling in the forest. And I managed to get um, uh, ticks. So I got, uh, this, this leg got all sort of uh, little itchy tick bites, and Nomi had to actually get tweezers and pull out the tick. The living ticks, you have to, to twist them as you pull them out, as they're sucking your blood. And um, you can get Lyme disease and get paralyzed. So we, we were laughing a lot about the idea of me being paralyzed the next time she came to Berlin. She would have to take me around everywhere. Um, it may well happen. I may actually go rigid at some point during this broadcast. So um, that zoo is, is fun. Um, we didn't see any tigers and lions. That was the only thing. I think we may have missed those. I'm not sure why, but the weather was beautiful. And um, the cafe there was actually very nice. Cafes, of course, is another thing. Let me go through the list of all the cafes we went to. Um, uh, the Café Lux in the Schiller, Kietz in Neukamm, um, by the Tempelhof Feld, the ex-airport there. That's a good uh, coffee, <laughs> coffee place, coffee stop. Um, Endorfina on Elsenstrasse, which is really close to where I live here. That's a, a kind of hidden place in the courtyard, which is a bakery and a nice coffee place with uh, a big cupboard roof over it. Um, the um, Bobble Pearl Tea Place uh, in, in Mitte, it's called um, Come By. And um, I'm going to bring this laptop over actually, so I don't have to keep. Yes, that's better. Um, we had Tortin. We went uh, the first uh, day to the Schellekeets uh, in the, uh, yeah, the, next to the airport and got some delicious tortillas from a, a market stall. We also went on the Sunday of that first weekend to the um, Naukölln, Naukölln Flohmarkt, which is my favorite outdoor market in Berlin. Berlin is very much about its outdoor markets. And um, that one just has a great sort of mixture of um, local and cosmopolitan things for sale. And a lot of the English-speaking creative community who live in that part of Naukölln um, are selling their stuff. They're always coming and going and I even had a stall there myself when I left uh, Berlin for Osaka in 2010. I got rid of a lot of my old stuff there and so in a way it's um, pre-selected for people like me <laughs> which um, helps you know and also I get, a, I get a sort of nice warm feeling. Also there's very good spicy food there, a Korean, the Korean stall, I recommend the food at the Korean stall in that market. Um, we also went, went to the Maibachufa market on the Saturday, it's slightly different, but on the Friday uh, and Tuesday, it's um, fabrics market and f food and vegetable. And, um, and also there's, at one end of it, it gets a bit hippie and a bit sort of burning man as well. And there are sort of people playing acoustic guitars and there's a sort of uh, permanent festival. Also along the canal there, the Landwehr Canal, uh, between Kreuzberg and Neukölln. It's very festive at the moment and there are a lot of people on little boats. There seems to be some boat rental business that's really flourishing at the moment there. Um, we also went to the, um, uh, the, uh, the famous um, uh, park, what's it called again, with um, all the drug dealing in Kreuzberg. Um, the old Bahnhof, um, the old Bahnhof Park. Uh, I shouldn't remember it, but it's got a children's zoo which is actually closed just now. You can only go in um, if you pre-reserve. 
Uh, so we couldn't see, unfortunately, that's one of my favorite places in Berlin, that children's zoo there. And it's the contrast between the sort of rather shady drug dealing going on outside that zoo and the, um, the sort of atmosphere of innocence inside is, is interesting. Uh, we also went to the Batanian uh, Center and also the Batanian Gallery in Copa Saddam. So the Batanian Center and, and its gallery and residence space are, are different but they're the same organization. In um, the Britannian Center, uh, there is, at Marianneplatz, there is a, um, an exhibition, Kunstrand Kreuzberg, which is kind of post-internet uh, exhibition featuring work by Koryak Angel Amalia Ullmann, and um, it's called From Social Sculpture to Platform Capitalism, post-internet, um, taking the idea of honey pumps from Joseph Boyce's work and saying that the, the, the new honey is the information we give to internet platforms about our lives. <laughs> Interesting curatorial concept. Other museums we went to, Kunstwerk has a, um, an exhibition of an Arabic artist, a, a minimalist artist, um, it's called Hassan um, Sharif. Uh, a sort of interesting take on uh, minimalism from the Arab-speaking world. NGBK, uh, also in Kreuzberg, had a really uh, good exhibition of just photographs of people who worked at and have worked at Melway Publishers, famous left-wing philosophical publishers based here in Berlin. Um, we also went to the Times Art Center, which is on Brunnenstrasse, and that's a, a strange uh, modern terrace building which has got a gallery, a sort of bunker-like concrete gallery in the ground floor and below the basement floor. Uh, of Chinese art and um, across the road from that is a, a cafe and bookshop called Ocelot which I would recommend uh, you can sip a coffee there while perusing the wares and uh, it's a nicely selected um, uh, bookshop. Um, there's a bookshop called um, Books, People and Places on Kölestrasse and that's like an architectural practice with a bookshop built in. They've got two rooms, one room in which you can buy the books and another room in which you can consult their books but not buy them. And I had a chat with the people running the place, and that's uh, a really nice atmosphere in there and really great selection of books. We also went to ProQM in Mitte, which is an old stalwart of the Berlin um, visual-oriented bookshops. And Koenig, Walter Koenig, um, down by the museum in so which is um, interesting. And I, I showed Nomi a book about uh, Lucy McKenzie's work um, with her Atelier EB fashion, pseudo-fashion label. Um, Noemi wasn't too impressed by that. She thought it was, uh, she didn't like the, the ancient Greek motifs on the towels because it was sort of ripped off from fashion designers. I kind of think that was the point, but um, we didn't see eye to eye on that. Kathy, it's my day today. <laughs> uh, we also went to Rickstorf, and there's a, a, an amazing hidden sort of park, a, a sort of recessed park that you might not see that, that when you get there is a bit like a chateau with a, a building um, sort of underground art gallery in, in at the end of it and but that's actually in between shows at the moment but they had some interesting things in that little gallery you'd be surprised um, the Mame Cha Cafe on Mulak Strasse in Mitte that's a Japanese place good for um, matcha latte and um, we also we went through Friedrichshain Friedrichshain isn't what it used to be, and I, I kind of avoid it in general. It's um, very teeming with youthful life, but it's uh, also kind of lost some of the things I liked, which were the smart cafe, for instance. I wanted to try a restaurant called Umami, which I thought was a, a Japanese um, restaurant, but it turned out to be a Vietnamese chain restaurant and was not that good. The food was, wasn't great. We also went out to the um, Vietnamese village, which is called the, the Dong. Tuan Center, um, and that's in Lichtenberg, Herzbergstrasse. You can get there quite easily with trams from the center of town, though. They drop you right outside it. And that's been important for me. I've been there three or four times in the last couple of months, really, as a kind of pseudo-holiday in the, in the Southeast Asia, because it's been, lockdown has been very isolating and also provincializing. I felt like Berlin might become potentially provincial, if I, if I couldn't travel, I would start to get um, cabin fever. So going out there, I can almost imagine I'm on a, a holiday. And it's funny, I went out there with Liana, my Malaysian friend, and she wasn't impressed at all, because she said, this is the kind of shopping center I would avoid in Kuala Lumpur. 
Um, where else? Uh, covered food markets in the Bergman and Naoni quarters. That's both in Kreuzberg. Kreuzberg is huge, so is Neukölln. I mean, they're, they're, the Bergman quarter and the Naoni quarter, they, they feel like they should be totally different um, cities, really. But uh, they're both in Kreuzberg, and they're both, they both have covered food markets, which are um, pleasant to visit. And um, we went to IKEA as well, part, it's so, somewhat in the same spirit as going out to the Dongzhuan uh, Center. IKEA is a Swedish exoticism, <laughs> you know, it's a cosmopolitanism of uh, Scandinavians. And um, the restaurant was closed, everything else was open, including the snack bar. And uh, it was teeming with people and there wasn't much social distancing that I could see, although masks were being worn. Uh, we also went to Motto but didn't go in because we went there last time. Uh, Naomi was here. And Zabriskie, which is a really good um, curated bookshop, again, of books relating to walking, uh, the countryside, and radical um, philosophies about that, about Spaziergang, uh, as they call it in German, moving through space. Spatial issues, urbanism issues, but, but related to non-urban areas. I just read an article in Liberation this morning, actually, talking about the, the green victories in the um, mayoral elections in France recently and how there is a kind of dual class system developing in which the, um, uh, the inner cities are becoming green paradises which ban cars, etc., etc. But then the, um, the relationship the city has to the countryside around it and to the uh, sub suburbs around it, which is particularly uh, a stark contrast in Paris where you have these very impoverished um, suburbs around outside the periphery. And then you have this relationship to an almost feudal countryside where peasants are still laboring to make the goat's cheese and <laughs> that people in Paris are consuming. But they're talking about how that's, that's become a new kind of frontier to pay attention to, uh, at the very least. Um, other cafes, Palmel on Instar City, these are just local cafes that we went to. Um, uh, barn, the Barn Cafe, there are various branches of that. I like the, um, the Krenzler, Krenzler Barn, which is on Kofostendam. And it's this amazing kind of rotunda up on the top of a tower uh, uh, above Super Dry. And you can get sort of 360 degree views out over the center of Berlin there. I also like Bikini Berlin, uh, just a, a shopping center, but it's got sort of more designery clothes. Um, it's funny doing a consumer guide, which also has these sort of anti capitalist um, footnotes, you know, like uh, let's keep an eye on the gap between the country and the suburbs and the city. Um, what else? Um, <laughs> Rixdorf, Kerner Park, um, Potsdamer Strasse. We went to Potsdamer Strasse, which used to be a hive of gallery activity, but is now really... The galleries scene is always moving. It's always sort of um, uh, like starlings on, on... There's a kind of group effect of abandoning or, or embracing and abandoning areas uh, collectively. So I think all the galleries have basically gone now to... Schoenberg and sort of around the Kofostendam and um, the Zamienstrasse, that kind of area. Uh, there used to be much more concentrated. There used to be even a branch of Do You Read Me, which is a sort of, again, visually oriented and fashion and art oriented bookshop on Auguststrasse, the original art street in Berlin when I arrived anyway. That was um, like, like Soho had been in New York, you know, about the same time period. Um, just beginning to be displaced by other areas, including Kreuzberg, which had galleries like Perez Projects. Um, Perez is now on um, uh, uh, Karl Marx Alley. So, uh, you know, there's kind of, there's, there's been a dispersal and distribution. There, luckily, the German government uh, is putting a lot of money. I just saw a little list of the um, amounts of money that governments are spending to recover their art sectors. Britain, zero euros. France has the most generous art subsidies of any European country. Um, where else have I not covered? Um, Second-hand bookshops around the Weserstrasse, again, here in Neukölln. Uh, there are a couple of, um, of those which I love to look into. And, um, uh, the Muse Museum for Communication is another place we went. I always seem to take people there. It's a, it's a post office museum, essentially, rather neglected. And um, you can play football with robots. So you used to be able to, I think people got a bit rowdy, and so they, they stopped playing football with robots. But the robots are still there, and they come and talk to you in, in, in the um, sort of atrium area. Pretty much everything. Oderberger Strasse, we, we went to uh, Bonanza Coffee Heroes there, which is the third wave 
coffee shop, the first that I was aware of in Berlin. And uh, Kaff dich glücklich is another nice cafe on that street. I was there the other day. Uh, that's a place I used to go. It's funny when you've lived in a city for um, two different periods of your life, really, because I, I do think um, the noughties and uh, the last decade are, are different. I've been back here from Asia for three years, essentially two years. Um, but the, the time where I lived most solidly in Berlin continuously was from 2003 till 2010. And that Berlin, especially Prenzlauer Berg, uh, is, is like a different city now in my memory. I have these maps, like, like any person, you know, as you get older, you have all these layered maps. A bit like the street view of Berlin, which is still stuck in 2008. It's kind of amazing now. They ran into legal issues. So many people wanted their houses blurred out, and it was Google said it was too expensive for them to uh, uh, employ human labor to blur out houses. I think that might have been, they might just have been flouncing off in a huff. I think they were actually just pissed off that uh, Germany hadn't taken very kindly to Street View. And um, so now, as a punishment, all we can see is 2008, which is a really interesting view of Neukölln before it was uh, gentrified. Um, the view that we get of my particular house, the building I live in now, uh, shows that there was an old lady living here who uh, put the most amazing um, flowers on her balcony, absolutely spilling over with flowers. I wish my balcony still looked like that. It's very stark and empty now. I'm not really here enough of the time to justify, to be able to care for any living things. I can't have a cat, I can't have flowers. Because I'm always traveling, at least in theory, I'm always traveling this year, I haven't been. Anyway, yes, that's my, my guide to Berlin, as I showed it to my girlfriend last week. And um, I hope it's been of use. Urban University. Mm -hmm.